I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. By far the biggest, most humbling mistake I've ever made in my saltwater tank career was not quarantining all new fish arrivals. I didn't use to quarantine any fish arrivals, I put them straight into my tank, and for a number of years, I didn't have a problem with it. I figured, I never had an issue, why would I start quarantining now? Fast forward to 2012 when I was set in my 235 gallon tank. I wasn't quarantining any fish, so all the fish that came into my system went straight into my tank. One of those fish brought in marine velvet, and I lost $1,500 worth of fish in just three days. Then to make things worse, I had to go on YouTube and tell the whole world that I messed up. Here's a hint, that's not fun, I don't recommend it. Now you may be saying, well that won't happen to me, and you know what? I used to say the exact same thing. So learn from my mistakes and quarantine all new fish arrivals coming into your tank. Now besides disease prevention, there's other good reasons to quarantine your fish. During the quarantine process, I'm watching for fish diseases and I'm also conditioning the fish. I want the fish to get used to me and I want to get used to that fish. There should be few or no other fish in the quarantine tank with them so that the fish doesn't have to compete for food or deal with aggression from other fish. Speaking of food, that's a great reason to quarantine and condition all new arrivals. Imagine arriving in a foreign country. You're hungry and you'd like some food. You go to a restaurant and they serve you food that you've never seen before. How likely are you to eat it? Not very likely. Now imagine having to fight with other people to get to the food. The same holds true with fish. What you feed your fish is very likely different from what they're used to eating. And if they have to deal with fish that are running around your tank grabbing all the food, the new arrival will very likely back off and avoid eating. In a separate quarantine tank, you can work directly with the fish in a controlled environment. No need to worry about other fish or the needs of everything else in your tank. It's just you and that fish. One reason I didn't quarantine my new fish arrivals was that the quarantine process seems difficult. I was confused and I didn't know what to do, so I simply avoided it. Once I started to learn about the quarantine process, I realized it's straightforward, and if I had been doing it all along, I would have saved myself a bunch of headaches. So here's some basics to get you started. First, a proper quarantine setup is separate from your display tank. It isn't plumbed into your display, and the two don't interact with each other in any way. One point of quarantining is to keep the animal isolated, and having your quarantine tank plumbed into your display tank is not quarantine. Second, a quarantine setup is straightforward. You're going to need a tank. A 20 gallon tank like this one is perfect for smaller fish like gobies, fairy wrasses, clownfish, and damselfish. 40 gallon breeder or 55 gallon tank is a good intermediate size, and if you're quarantining fish that are above 5 inches, then you want to get a 75 gallon or 120 gallon tank. If you're taking a big fish and cramming it into a small space, that fish is going to be comfortable and that's not helping your quarantining process. Other things you need in your quarantine setup is a lid. It's heartbreaking to get your fish almost through the quarantine process and then find them jump down on the floor dead and crispy. Get a lid that's tight fitting to keep your fish in the tank so you can get them through the quarantine process and then into your display tank. Now speaking of a lid, you do want a lid with lights. Having lights in your quarantine setup will encourage the fish to get used to your routine and bring the fish out. I found that a fish in a tank that's not lit, they don't come out that often, they don't come out to eat, and it makes it harder to work with them. So get a lid, and get a lid with a light. Now, speaking of the fish feeling comfortable, you also want to put some PVC pieces in the quarantine tank for the fish to hide. A big rule with saltwater tanks is that the more places the fish have to hide, the less that they actually will. Now I like these big pieces, this is a 4 inch elbow, here's a 4 inch T. You just put them right down in the tank, that gives a place for the fish to hide to help them feel comfortable. Of course you need some filtration, and the hang on back filter is an easy way to do this. You can put filter pads in here if you need it, it sits on the back of your tank, provides a little bit of water flow, and gives you the filtration that you need. Also, heater. You want a heater in your quarantine tank because you actually want to elevate the temperature of your quarantine tank. We'll talk about that in a future video, and I like these Eheim Yagers. Here's a great simple heater that's reliable and is an industry standard. With a heater, you're going to want to have a thermometer to make sure that the temperature is actually where you set it. Now what about cycling your quarantine tank? The easiest way to do this is to add bacteria in a bottle product like Dr. Tim's One and Only Nitrifying Bacteria or Fritz Turbo Start 9. You can also soak a sponge filter in your display tank for several days and then place that filter in your quarantine tank to inoculate the quarantine tank with nitrifying bacteria. 
Quarantining all new fish arrivals is a must in my book. I simply won't put a fish in my tank unless it's been properly quarantined. Learn from my mistake. Don't do what I do and think, this won't happen to me, there's no reason to quarantine. That's no different than saying, I've never had a car wreck, why do I need car insurance? Do yourself a favor, do the fish the favor, and do your tank the favor of quarantining all new fish arrivals in your tank. I'm Mark Callan, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. I'll catch you in the next episode.